Best of luck. They say a man's best friend is his dog, and never a truer word where this lady is concerned. Meet 48-year-old Sally Hyder. At just 28 years old, Sally was diagnosed with crippling MS, leaving her wheelchair bound and in the depths of despair. Well, that was until uh, just last year when uh, Harmony the Labrador was uh, given to Sally to help her around the house and totally transformed her life. And, and Sally and Harmony join us now, and it's lovely to see you. Thank you very much mm -hmm. indeed Thank for, you. for coming in. So, um, before MS, you were a very active person. I mean, you loved mountaineering and hiking. Um, did, you, did your husband propose to you at the base camp of Everest? In Tibet, yes, he yeah. did. So, so when it when it crept up on you, what were the what were the first signs? Well, for a couple of years, I'd felt very tired, and I'd had viruses, and I kept being diagnosed as having post-viral syndrome, and I just my balance wasn't very good, and I just felt as if I was wading through porridge all the time. Mm. Yeah. Um, and then there was one day when I woke up and had no feeling in my right leg. Yeah. And, and so did you immediately think, right, I've got to ha get this looked at? Because you'd put it off, well, you hadn't done did, anything about it. I didn't really, which is stupid, because <laughs> I just got up and went to work. Took, we had a dog then, took the dog for a walk, went to work, and it was when I fell down the stairs at work because I couldn't feel where I was putting my leg. Yeah. Gosh. But I then was looked at. And that's when you got the diagnosis that it was... Not immediately. Illness. I was then taken into hospital and then I had various tests. And at that point, I asked them, are you looking at MS? Mm. And so then yes. Over the next sort of seven years, you went on to have three children. And after the birth of the first two, you sort of hit this depression, really, yeah. where you were struggling. You were struggling with, with life a little bit. Like, yes. things were getting on top of you. It was... It was difficult, it was hard to sort of deal with what was going on in your life. And then the birth of your third child, um, and your third child was um, born and was immediately diagnosed with global neurodevelopmental, is that right? She wasn't Total immediately. I had to fight for a year for them to accept there was a problem. I just knew there was a problem. Oh, OK. But then, yes, we got global neurodevelopmental delay. Um, right. And now she's um, has... A a learning disability and is autistic. So you're dealing with this and on top of the MS as well and that's, that's an awful lot going on in your life at this time. Yeah, but we're not a sad family. It always sounds pathetic, but we're what? not. <laughs> before, before, no, you're not a sad family, but it did drive you to the... To, you had said, you know, I, I could chuck myself off a bridge here. Yes. You did, so it, it did... Postnatal depression yeah. really did bring it down. So yeah. the postnatal depression, the MS, looking, uh, lo looking as... as as Holly said, looking after a, a, a daughter who has learning disabilities and uh, needs extra help, yes. you, you say that one day you woke up and the sun had gone out. Yes. It was dark. So how do you get yourself back from, from that place? I think I'm a fairly determined being, but I also, I always set myself challenges yeah. to, to add some fun into life to see what I can do. But I, I was beyond even able to do that. Mm. So then I was looking for what help I could get, what well, support. For you, an, a very active person um, and a very positive person, those acts of things that you were beginning to struggle with, getting the post, getting the phone, getting things out of the washing machine, putting taking your socks off. Constantly asking my daughter to take my socks on and off, get things I've dropped, pick things up for me. Yeah. And this is uh, this is Clara, your daughter. Clara, Clara. my fifteen-year-old. And she, old, yeah. she was really a carer, wasn't she? Yeah. So, so at what point did you think that you could look elsewhere for help and find harmony? There was just a. I'd got everyone back to school. That you know, we'd had the long summer holidays. It had been a really hard summer. Melissa's autism had become much, much more difficult. My MS was really, really hard, and I just had found it the most exhausting few months ever. So then I sat down and I just. I googled um, disability assistance mm -hmm. Scotland and the canine partners website popped up so mm -hmm. I just clicked on it just to see what that was about and and about these. And so you, you went there, you met Harmony, you sort of had a few, like, getting to know each other. You went on a training course for sort of yeah. two weeks yeah. to learn um, how Harmony Well, it's, it's actually quite a long um, assessment process where yeah. they make sure that we're able to look after the dogs and that the dogs would, would be able to well. help she us. She wasn't your first choice, though, was she? No, she don't tell her. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, it was because Carmony has two characters. Like a lot of the assistants, 
dogs do. I thought I'd liked another dog because I'd seen a bit of character, but I'd only seen Harmony working. But when, on an assessment day, I took her out on exercise and I discovered how much she loved just sniffing and running around in the field, I thought... So what was it world. like when you got her home? How, how quickly can, could you train her up to be uh, not just a member of the family, but, but also an ass your assistant? Well, she's already, because she's done her advanced training, she already knows the tasks. And I'd had two weeks at the centre with her. But then when we came home, of course, it's a different home. And suddenly, instead of a few items of wet washing, you've got a whole wash mm. and then a second wash and she's going... Excuse me, <laughs> um, but very quickly. I mean, she was marvellous. She adapted to us very, very quickly. We've got so we've got some uh, some footage of of the things that she's Let's done see. already yes. uh, yeah. today. So uh, so here's the uh, here's the first one, and uh, and this is uh, her getting the washing out of the machine, which she does for you, and uh, brings oh. that uh, brings that over, and then we've got and then of course when the post arrives, uh, she uh, she will go and uh, fetch the post for you. And bring you the paper, oh. bring that over. We've obviously made this a much shorter area because of the studio, but she'll do this in your own house, of course. And uh, and then we've oh. got the socks. You're taking, as we said, you know, she you, you struggle with the with the socks, and she can uh, she'll take your socks off. Gosh, for I you. mean, this must just give you so much independence. It just gives you your own life back, really. Yeah, it's independence, also self esteem and confidence. Mm. Suddenly, I'm quite an outgoing person, and I become much more insular. Yes. And suddenly, it gives me such excitement and happiness mm. we work together we're a team and I'm never alone and also so, it's a learning process because every six months she learns something new they, she they adapts ask us, along with you they ask us to teach her a new task and I enjoy teaching we use clicker training and it's a fantastic way she loves learning something new I love training her and it just keeps her going so and if you so, so if we're in your sitting room now and you wanted to use the phone what, what, what yeah. would you do how many how many good oh. girl good girl now, of course, they have specially trained demo dogs and canine partners, and she's just my, my helper at home. So yeah. we'll see how she goes. How many? Look, look. How many? Look. Come with me. How many? Get the phone. Get the phone. How many? I'm not allowed to touch her. How many? So. Get the phone. Good girl. Good girl. Get the phone. That's it. Oh, dear. Bring it here. Bring it here. A slippery floor There's a slippery and floor and a slippery phone. Trust oh, us to give a one that's got a you curb back. I know. <laughs> oh, oh, sweetie. Oh. Put it on the rug. There, you go. there, we there you are. Yeah, let's there put it on the rug. That's good idea. There we go. Go on. Get it for me. Get it. How oh, many? I've got good girl. Yeah, well well done. That's it. Good well girl. done, sweetheart. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. And as you say, this is a very, very unusual environment for, for her to be in. But, um, but also, you, you, in the snow, you tipped up in your chair. Well, I was in a disability scooter and I, you know, as one shouldn't do, went tried to go down a very icy slope and lost control. And so I ended up flying down the slope and tipping out of my scooter and hitting a stone wall and knocking myself out. How many? I was so tempted to distract her, but I know we're not, we're not, we're not allowed <laughs> to distract not allowed you to. in at all. I distract you. And, she, you and she, rushed, she ran many? to get help for you. Oh, look, come here. She, and you've written a, She noted, well, I, I was kind of not quite with it, but the, a couple, when I discovered, um, had found me. She'd barked and barked and yelped and then had seen them coming and had... Um, brought them to where I was. But also, oh. amazingly, as a byproduct of all of this, she has calmed your daughter as well, Melissa. Yeah. She calms Melissa down. Totally. And Perhaps that's, asleep. you know, they have a real, they have a bond yeah, between the two Yeah, because Melissa well. used to scream a lot. Yes. And two days into coming home in a new environment and everything else, um, she had a panic attack, Melissa did. And instead of running the opposite way, because it's really noisy, mm. she just went straight to Melissa, sat her down and, and had a remarkable. cuddle. They are remarkable, aren't they? She Absolutely. Is incredible. Absolutely incredible. Thank Absolutely you so incredible. much for coming Thank in today. Thank you. Yeah, lovely, lovely and, to uh, meet and you. And here is, uh, the, this is the story, the remarkable dog that helped a family through the darkest of times. It's a true story right there. Oh. You've heard some of it today, Finding Harmony, with uh, the written book written by Sally. So thank you, Sally. Lovely thank to meet you. Thank you, Harmony. Thank you. Right, still to come, uh, grumpy old woman and